A major problem that inevitably arises when you do chemistry is how do you clean your glassware? In general, using sometimes water or another solvent like acetone is enough, but what happens if it isn't and there's still residue left over? With different types of salts and compounds, water or another solvent will not remove it, and even scrubbing has a very difficult time. This is extremely problematic when you're trying to clean something like a round bottom flask where it's actually very difficult to scrub the inside at all. The typical answer to the glass cleaning issue is by the use of a base bath and less frequently an acid bath. Generally, the acid bath is used to react with more inorganic compounds and solubilize them and bring them into solution, where the base bath is more used to remove organic compounds. For the acid bath, I used 5,500 milliliters of distilled water and 2,500 milliliters of 31.45% hydrochloric acid. For the base bath, I used 1 liter of distilled water, 200 grams of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, and 4 liters of isopropyl alcohol. By request, I've included the sources and the costs of the chemicals that I use. Both are very easy to make, but the base bath is considerably more costly due to the use of isopropyl alcohol and sodium hydroxide instead of just straight up cheap hydrochloric acid. First, I'll show you how to make the acid bath, which is pretty quick. To a suitable plastic container was added 5,500 milliliters of distilled water. This was followed by the addition of 2,500 milliliters of 31.45% hydrochloric acid. It is generally important to remember the rule that you add acid to water and not the other way around. Technically, in our case though, since we're using hydrochloric acid, which is 70% water, this rule isn't extremely important, but in general you should follow it just for safety purposes. Anyway, making the acid bath is pretty simple in general because once the acid is added, it's actually done. And to even add to the easiness of making it, or laziness, I didn't even mix the acid in and I simply just let diffusion do its job. Once it's all been added, I placed the lid on top, which was labeled appropriately with acid bath and an exclamation mark to indicate that it's dangerous. Also, you might notice that there's some purple electrical tape wrapped around the bin, and I use this to make the lid seal better. Now to make the base bath, which has a procedure that's a little longer and significantly more costly. To a suitably large container was added 1 liter of distilled water. To this was added about 200 grams of sodium hydroxide. You can use less or more, it doesn't really matter, it all depends on how strong you want your base bath to be. Also, I use sodium hydroxide, but it's actually more common to use potassium hydroxide. With strong stirring, the sodium hydroxide was allowed to completely dissolve until the solution became totally clear. The dissolution of sodium hydroxide in water is quite exothermic, so not only are we going to have to wait for the sodium hydroxide to dissolve, we're also going to have to wait for the solution to cool back down. We don't want to add hot sodium hydroxide solution to the isopropyl alcohol. Because cooling takes a little while, I prepared the bin with the alcohol in the meantime. So again, to a suitably large plastic bin was added 4 liters of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Once a sodium hydroxide solution had cooled to around room temperature, it was possible to proceed on to the next step. To do this is quite simple, you simply just pour the sodium hydroxide solution directly into the isopropyl alcohol. The addition of the sodium hydroxide to the alcohol is also going to be exothermic. If we didn't wait for the sodium hydroxide solution to cool down before adding it, it is possible that the isopropyl alcohol could heat up and maybe get near boiling. Here I am placing some round bottoms into the bin, and sadly enough, there wasn't enough volume to fully submerge them. I'm okay with this, and I didn't make more due to the cost of the isopropyl alcohol, but to get around this, you can simply just rotate the glassware every hour or so. Then, the lid with the appropriate base bath label was placed on top. Remember that a base bath does dissolve glass to a certain extent, so don't leave your glassware in for too long. Generally, you shouldn't really need to leave any glassware in more than overnight. 